Hi guys, welcome back to the Mental Health Cortez. My name is Essie and I'm so glad you clicked on my video because I'm going to be sharing a lot today. So make sure you stick around till the end of the video. But please do me the honest of subscribing to the channel and hit the bell button so that you will be one of the first people to be notified when I upload a new video and my videos are always worth watching. Let's not waste much time. I know you've already hit the bell button, so thank you for that. Let's just get right into the video. Thank you. In this video, I said I'll be talking about things I dislike about living with bipolar disorder. When I was planning this video, I did not know whether using the word hate will be a strong word or things I don't love will be a better way but basically this video are things I don't like about living bipolar disorder and for people who may not know I uploaded a video two weeks ago about things I do love about living bipolar disorder so it will be very great if you go and watch that video too before you come for me because every cloud has a silver lining so make sure that you go and watch that video and you also watch this one and you get the whole the whole situation here one of the things i do not love about living with bipolar disorder is weight gain and someone may be wondering <laughs> weight gain how okay so i'm going to put pictures of myself when i was uh, maybe 19 20 before bipolar disorder i'll put them here or here for you to see how i looked like and when i was diagnosed with bipolar disorder i was told i was going to be on medication in order to manage the condition so the way somebody um, somebody who has a disability so for example if somebody is blind or visually impaired they will need um, a white cane to move around to be able to go about their daily duties it's the same way because i have a psychosocial disability which is bipolar disorder i would need medications therapy knowing my triggers and stresses to be able to manage my everyday life in that same way i need these medications so these medications are mood stabilizers and psychotropic medication and i did not know nobody nobody told me nobody told me that my sister when you go on this medication you are going to gain a whole lot of weight i had to see it for myself yeah i had to see it for myself so i realized that when i i, I started a medication my mommy was the first person to complain to the doctor that she doesn't know what is going on over here and my mommy usually doesn't complain about my weight or anything but i remember clearly she told the doctor like what's like what's going on i'm sleeping too much eating too much and you know i think they adjusted the dosage a little but i did not know oh over the years my sister you are gonna move from how how i was about maybe 68 kilos or something to now i think i weigh about 92 to 95 kilos i've not checked my weight recently and yes i told people there was like even though my mommy is on the bigger side i do believe i would have gained weight over the years because i tell people look as a a, a, a human being as you age there's some amount of weight you would gain which is normal so i don't even understand why people body shame people who are growing up and gaining weight because it's a normal thing but for me the way my weight escalated it was just skyrocketing like so skyrocketing to the extent that i had to start giving out my clothes i had to start alterating my clothes buy new clothes and um, what, what else happened i was being body shamed by people like people i haven't met for a while people who even know me who see me hey you are fat oh, what's going on oh, bolo. like i had everything and i couldn't just hi do you want me to explain something to you i'm on some medications for my mental health which, which, whose side effects makes me gain weight. Are you okay with that? Would you please 
stop body shaming me because you don't know what I'm dealing with. I wish I could say that, but I couldn't say that. So I had to deal with these people for years, even still now. Like people sometimes meet me and like, oh, you have, you have lost some weight, you have gained some weight. At this point in my life, I have stopped explaining myself to people because there are people who still meet me and say I've lost weight, some say I've gained weight. So everybody, you be the judge of my size since it's very important to me. Yeah. Just be the judge. Some people are also on these medications. Some people I know, they are, they are, because they are slimmer, they gain weight. They do gain weight, but it's, it's gradual. It's not like boom like that. The next thing I hate about living with bipolar disorder is the cost of the medications for managing it. The psychotropic medication and the mood stabilizers. Thankfully, we live in a time where the medications, the brands are many, there's variety. So if medication A doesn't work for you, you can try B some years ago maybe like 30 40 20 years ago it wasn't like that so things were a little bit difficult for people who had mental health conditions especially if a particular medication is not working for them it's like they had no choice so i'm grateful for the time i'm living in but i'm not grateful for it should i be <laughs> but i'm not happy about the fact that i have to get these medications when i was working I didn't really feel the pain that much. I felt like, yeah, I can afford it. I can afford it. Then when I became unemployed since 2021, I have felt the burden that my parents are carrying to have to pay for these medications. Even when they give me the money to go and buy it and I see how much each tablet costs and it just breaks my heart because I know, thankfully, my parents are supporting me. So what are those out there? You do not have should i say the luxury of maybe your pensioner parents giving you money to buy the medication it's tough it's really tough i just wish the government of ghana or the pharmaceutical and um, companies can come together and maybe subsidize the cost of these medications because we need it it's not like we need it um once every month that would have been great but this is daily medication you need and you don't have a choice because if you do not take the medications as prescribed you will relapse and relapse is when the, the sickness comes back and comes back harder so if let's say you are on a malaria um, treatment for malaria yeah and you say they ask you to take the medication for five days and after day two you start feeling better so you go off the medication the malaria does come back and it comes back harder so <laughs> that's why it's advised take it as prescribed so for us to when you are on these medications and you do not take them as prescribed or you just go off them like you feel like i'm great i don't need this medication again what will happen is bipolar disorder will come back and then disgrace you and i tell people that if you respect your mental health your mental health will respect you so what happens is it's not every time i like let me just say it it's not every time that you are like someone defaults like they're not taking their medication that they will have. sometimes they are doing everything right they have committed to their medication and committed to therapy but sometimes things just go wrong we don't know what happens maybe it could be an external trigger or a stressor something that they may not even be aware is causing them to relapse so please don't go around judging people who relapse and, yeah that's an answer if you relapse you were not committed to your medication it doesn't always happen like that sometimes people are doing everything right but still something happens so please let's be kind don't come don't like don't come and judge anybody yeah sometimes life like like life is life and the other thing i do not like about living with bipolar disorder is manic or depressive episodes i tell people bipolar disorder is a two-in-one sickness which means when you get sick you relapse you experience the mania which is the manic episodes and when when the swing moves you are no longer manic you could either go back to well or mentally healthy or depression which is the depressive episode and so within these these two episodes it comes with consequences or damage when i say damage 
it's like what happens when you are in this situation so someone can say that oh me when i'm i have malaria i have blisters on my lips which is which makes it difficult to eat in the same way when you are you are having the mania you are having manic and a manic episode there are so many things that you do which can affect the, yourself the people around you i know some people who made certain decisions in the heat of the mania which they regret so um i've heard of a story of a man who he was married to his wife he has bipolar disorder and in the excitement of the mania mania causes you to have high energy and be very reckless and make very reckless decisions he went and took all their money in the bank account something they've been saving for their life savings and spent everything tell me if you were his wife what will you do honest answers only <laughs> you see so with something like that you you have caused damage and there will be consequences because i mean your wife may forgive you but the consequences may be that it will affect your retirement plan it will affect you, like how you live maybe you may not be able to afford a certain lifestyle anymore and of course you will have to go on an apology tour that's a tour of tour tour an apology tour is i like to describe it as when you have bipolar disorder you go on a, an apology tour once or or many times in your life in the sense that you have to go around apologizing to different people for your actions oh i'm really sorry i did this to you i'm really sorry i did th that to you i'm really sorry oh please forgive me you will do it and i know those who are having bipolar disorder watching me can attest to the fact that apology tour it, it's become something you live with going around apologizing to people and trust me you are not apologizing because um you are like you're apologizing let me stick to it you're apologizing for many reasons you're apologizing apologizing for how bad you feel and for the damage that you have caused and it's like the guilt <laughs> the guilt you live with the guilt to this thing the guilt is so much that going on that apology tour sets you free yeah so please those who will be receiving the apologies please try to forgive people who do certain things to you in their manic episode or depressive episode trust me it's not something they would want to do so please find a good place in your heart to forgive them now the depressive episodes um when you are depressed you withdraw loss of interest in activities you once enjoyed or things you are supposed to do and because of that you'll be losing opportunities yeah i remember i had a speaking engagement about two years ago or three years ago i was here okay it was two years ago i was heavily depressed i couldn't even open my email to accept the invitation and the time passed so maybe it was 18th february i'm just saying 18th february I recovered let's say maybe early March and the event was already over I had to apologize and thankfully it was a mental health organization so they understood and forgive me but what if it was another institution they wouldn't have understood and so being manic or depressed it causes damage it makes you lose opportunities and sometimes there's also this slight memory loss you it's like you don't remember what you did or you have done and you take certain actions based on how you are feeling me for instance there are certain clothes i cannot find i remember there was this beautiful skirt suit my mom bought for me for my matriculation at the university of ghana we can find the skates we cannot find the jackets if you ask me where is it i don't remember who i gave it to i don't remember it was was it today that i was there i was trying to remember where my i have this beautiful brown and yellow cloth which was from my i think my ceremonial way from holy child in high school i saw the very beautiful dress i don't know where the dress is and i can't remember and it's like maybe in the heat of giving away my things when i say giving away i was in that state of of i'm giving away all my clothes or i'm giving away this number of clothes maybe i added it and i don't remember and the, the slight memory loss is not 
it's, it's like you it's like you don't remember it's it may sound upset for people who know about bipolar disorder but you don't remember you try to remember you can't remember because a lot was going on when you were having the episode and so now when things calm down it's a little bit difficult to remember what's really happening why you do this why you do that and so um when you i tell people who are bipolar disorder that if you go through something like that just forgive yourself move on and trust god that things will get better me it's bashing me that i can't find certain clothes i can't find certain things it's bashing me and i remember there was this one time i packed a suitcase of things and i went to put it by the dustbin i was living in a family friend's house at the time and my mommy and like i remember my auntie asked me am i throwing away these things i said yes i'm giving it away she did not know the contents of the suitcase so my mommy came to visit and she opened the suitcase and realized i was actually going to throw away i think setting the valuable things certificates and all that so i'm glad my mother saved the situation because in that i don't know that is memory loss or i don't care anymore i was just throwing it away and i remember there was this time i was an admission at college the side the side board and the same thing happened i was just throwing away my belongings in the dustbin one by one but there was this beautiful way that i had i just threw it away and i'm so glad that i remember there was this backpack i had i kept on asking my parents where is the backpack they were like oh and let's give it to them to take home i'm so glad that nurse did that because i know if that backpack was it i would have opened everything and thrown it away just giving it like i don't know i don't know how to describe maybe a mental health professional who will be watching you can describe that thing in the comment section why you just get rid of things you you, you love it and then you cannot explain so i don't like that because i'm a keeper i love to keep valuable things so when i find out that me myself i threw away those things i'm not happy at all the next thing I do not love about living with bipolar disorder is the stigma and the discrimination. I call it the sting of stigma. If you have not been stigmatized in your life before and you, you feel that first hand experience of stigma, that's when you know it is painful. It hurts like hell. I mean, I'm, I've said it before. I've, maybe you will see i'll link the video in the, in the comment in the description where i got fired from my job after i disclosed to a member of management who went to tell other members of management about my lived experience with bipolar disorder hmm, that story it's it's it hurts i mean my whole life i used to think oh we are in a modern society people are reading more about mental health i mean stigma is not happening oh it's happening every single day if i tell people there's even direct and indirect form of stigma where people don't realize they won't say it into your face like oh i'm firing you because you have bipolar disorder but their actions and inactions it's just they are stigmatizing you and discriminating against you it's high time like everybody like you just know that once you have an mental health condition there's a, a a high possibility that you may be stigmatized discriminated or just treated differently because of your condition it's just sometimes people like to put labels on people which is unacceptable which is wrong but they will do it and i tell people stigma is a it's something we've been fighting against for many years. Stigma has always been there. And that's why it makes it, it's taking a longer time to fight against it because it has always been there. We have to keep creating awareness, awareness, awareness so that it will reduce the stigma. Even now, 2023, people are still stigmatizing and discriminating. Yes, you should also be, be prepared that sometimes your own friends, your own family members, in one way or the other, stigmatize or discriminate against you. Sometimes people don't even realize that the language they are using is discriminatory or insulting. I mean, when you say somebody is mad, somebody is 
um, which I, I don't want to even use those words. I shouldn't be using them. But the language, it's 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 wrong. I think people should learn the appropriate words to call somebody who has a mental health condition. And, oh, you have lived experience with a mental health condition, not those negative and no, not appropriate words. That's very, even in our local languages, there are some. There are some ways you should be using for someone who has a mental health condition. It gets like hell. So I don't like that about living with a mental health condition. The last thing I hate about living with bipolar disorder is being able to, the difficulty in sometimes being able to determine what is my personality and what is like in the condition. So let me explain. When sometimes I go to town to try to buy something I really need to, maybe I need a sandal. When I buy it, there's this guilt I feel. I'm processing. Yes, now, did you really buy the sandals because you needed it? Or you bought it because you are money and you have started spending your money? Some Another person who does not have lived experience with bipolar disorder just buys it and moves away. But I'm processing and I'm thinking. Like guilt comes, so I have to have a conversation in my mind. No, I need it. Then maybe if let's say I have a disagreement with someone, or was I spoke my canon, like I shared my canon opinion with someone, I have to process. Were you being like, are you being so vocal because of the condition? Because yes, yeah, sometimes the condition lowers your ambition, so things you are not supposed to say, you say. So I have to keep processing. And I don't like that because I remember my life before the condition. I don't have to think about extra things like this. But I have to keep asking myself, is that my personality like being or it is the condition? I have to keep processing and processing. And I know other people who also have lived experience with these conditions who agree with me that they have to keep trying to see the difference. And sometimes this can be exhausting, it can be draining can be uh, even if sometimes if you, you yourself you are not trying to see the difference other people on the outside yeah concern people's association yes they'll come and judge you that hey are you sure hey are you taking your medicine just because maybe you went out you you laughed really hard then they think then they pass a comment like hey the sickness is coming on Meanwhile, to you are just having a good time, you are just being happy. So it's it's like I mean, if someone passes a comment like that, you go home and be thinking, hey, is it a condition or it is me? So even if you won't do that processing, other people will be there. Yes, concerned people's processing association. Yeah, they will be there to always judge your every action or every move and i don't like that i'm living with bipolar disorder especially when they get to me ah they be it's like their attitude towards you changes they always want to be uh, analyzing your symptoms and all of that i'm not saying don't be concerned but sometimes it can be really irritating somebody just wants to have a good time somebody just wants to be happy and then they just think you're having a manic episode or maybe you withdraw away for to have your space your quiet time and they think oh you are depressed yeah i can see it even though i'm not a psychiatrist or psychologist you are depressed please it's already a heavy load to be living with a mental health condition so when you do things like that it's so difficult to breathe and breathe so please help us so that we can also you know work together so those are just some of the things that i do not like about living with bipolar disorder i mean there are many more but if i say i will mention every single thing that i do not like we will not finish today and so thank you so much for making it to the end of the video if you would like to share your comments in the comment section please do i'd love to hear from you and if you'd like to be a guest on the channel, send me an email or a DM. Let's arrange and let's have you over. I'm really looking forward to having more people on the channel. So please make sure you like this video, share it with your friends. And I'll see you next week. Bye.